Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. What's up, guys? This is Sports Spectrum. I am Jason Romano. So glad you're tuning in to our program today. We are presented by Compassion International, the most trusted child development ministry in the world, providing a hope more powerful than poverty. Check out their website, Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum, to learn more about how you can help release a child from poverty. We're also presented by Water Mission, a nonprofit Christian engineering ministry fighting the global water crisis with safe water, sanitation, and hygiene solutions in developing countries and disaster areas. Go to watermission.org to learn more about the great work they're doing, watermission.org. Today on the show, this is an interview that I've been waiting to do for a very long time, and this is one that is with a friend of mine. His name is Todd Gongwer. His book is called Lead for God's Sake. He's an author, a speaker, a leadership expert, and he wrote this book back in 2010. He tells the story about the book during this interview, but this is one of the more powerful books I've ever read. It has changed my life in many ways. It has helped me see, uh, even going back nine years ago when I read it, it's helped me see how to go about being a leader, to lead like Jesus, right? To lead for God's sake, what that looks like. And this book is written so beautifully because it's a parable that tells the story of Coach Steve Rocker and his unique relationship with Joe the janitor at a high school. And man, if you have read this, you know how powerful this book is. This is actually a book I've read through four times uh, in the past eight, nine years. It's that profound and that important to me. And I finally thought, hey, we got to get Todd on here, learn about his story and tell the story of how Lead for God's Sake came to be. So this is a, a personal favorite of mine because it's a friend and it's a guy who's written a book that has really changed my life. Todd Gongwar, speaker and author. He joins us here today. Take a listen on Sports Spectrum. Todd, welcome to Sports Spectrum. Thanks so much, Jason. It is awesome to to be here, man. It's great to have you on. I'm so excited for this conversation. It's one I've wanted to have for a while. And uh, you wrote the book, Lead for God's Sake, and we're going to talk about that book. It's a book that's truly changed my life, one of the great books I've ever read. Um, But let's start with this so whole coronavirus, you know, quarantining world. And I saw last week, you know, that you recently turned 50 years old and you're postponing that if you want to explain a little bit more about that in this quarantine. But how are you holding up? How are things going right now for you? Yes, I decided that, um, you know, as as my wife about a week into things, she shared with me that she canceled the surprise birthday party and <laughs> and uh, we, we didn't even have a chance to go out to eat and all those things. And obviously, you know, you keep those things in perspective because those are small, small things compared to what a lot of folks are dealing with. But nonetheless, um, I decided that uh, I made a formal announcement kind of like that, that uh, on, on my social media that I was postponing the, the 50th birthday and that I'm going to remain 49 indefinitely. That's and, good. Uh, that's smart. So, so that's where I am right now. I'm not, you know, I'm supposed to be 50, but I'm I'm not accepting that right now. So, well, if everything else is postponed, you know, we might as well postpone your birthday too. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So, who knows <laughs> when we'll get back to it? But now it's been, it's been uh, interesting. It's not been, you know, the biggest change for me, and, and probably not unlike you, Jason. But you know, we travel a lot, and uh, you know, all of a sudden, I tell folks that, and, and even for my business. You know, I tell folks I'm a lot like the restaurant industry, except for I don't really have a drive through carry out option. Right. Um, right. You know, it's that when things stopped, the events canceled. That's it. No more. No more travel. And so, um, you know, from a being at home standpoint, not on the road, that's been awesome because I just man, I love my family and I have um, I have a 19 year old or 20 year old now, uh, 16 year old and nine-year-old and so the house is is definitely still hopping and interesting (laughs) and it's a blessing to be able to you know spend a little bit more time and then have a few more meals at home at least consistently or consecutively i should say together so yeah but um but yeah it's it's been different a lot of interactions a lot more similar to what we're doing right now where we're doing 
you know, lots of Zoom calls and Skype calls and things like that. So. Yeah, that's the good thing about technology. There's a lot of bad to it, but this is a great thing. I was thinking about this. Imagine, Todd, I mean, we're, we're around the same age. Imagine if this was 1990 and we, we go back to high school and college days and this happened. What would it be like? I mean, we, we'd just be picking up the phone. Remember, long distance cost money. So you yeah. couldn't call people. So you wouldn't probably, you'd probably be, be sending letters and watching old VHS tapes. I don't know. Yeah. Now there's some... <laughs> Uh, there's a I, I have not thought of that yet, but Jason, that's a that's a great thought. There are there are elements of that that I that I think would be really good. We we maybe we maybe could use that for at least two weeks, maybe a week or two. Yeah. But you're right. Then beyond that, we would uh, no doubt. I mean, it would be really stir crazy because yeah, that's. That is a crazy thing to think about, man, how different that would be, because uh, there's no doubt there's still been I have communicated with a lot of my, you know, and still been able to maintain communication with a lot of my clients and friends and different things like that. So from that standpoint, you're right. We're, we're at a time where, you know, even from an education standpoint, the kids can still, you know, they'd have been going to school more than likely July. I mean, like I, dead center of the summer or whenever yeah they go back to finish and gosh what a mess so there there is definitely um some uh some benefit to where we are now in, in time in terms of technology I, we're going to talk about leadership in a little bit certainly how it relates to your book and certainly the speaking that you do and, and the different messages that you share but what's the great leadership lesson that you're taking away during this quarantine time that you'd share with those of us that are listening to this podcast and this radio show right now, what is the lesson that you've seen? You know, you, there's a lot of leadership lessons that we can all share. Uh, you share a lot of them in your book, but what's the one you're taking away during quarantine time? Well, I, I mean, perspective is a huge um, part of everything because, you know, as you listen to different stories throughout the country, when you hear, the, the, the college athletes that get the, the final four taken away or the, or the NCAA tournament taken away from them, that the athletes that got their entire season just ended right after it started, the high school kids who don't get to experience their senior years or a college. I mean, there's all kinds of stories that you hear, that people that their 50th birthday happened to fall on this time. Or whatever. <laughs> you, know, you, you hear these stories, but the reality is um, – you know, there are there are folks really, really dealing there. Are, there's folks that are dealing with loss right now. There are folks in the hospital right now. There are folks that in in nursing homes that can't be visited. People that are living alone that are I mean, you know, they can't visit them anymore. I mean, so there's yeah. there are so many others that, you know, perspective. And then the other thing is, you know, you see this every once in a while where people remind us of, man, you know, back in the the late 60s. Um, seniors in high school were heading off to, you know, to a war or, you know, to, you know, so, or back into world war two times or world. I mean, like, so there's, there's always been this, um, you know, this perspective thing out there that I think is important for all of us to, you know, keep at the top of our minds that listen, you know, despite how tough the circumstances are for most of us, we still have many things we can be thankful for. And, In light of that perspective, too, you know, tough times, difficult circumstances are are almost always the the number one impetus to deep um, positive change in our lives. You you know, you just you just don't hear people talking about, oh, you know, I went to this, you know, I went through this great season where I was a success and everything. And it really it really hit me hard and changed my heart. Yeah. (laughs) You, you, you always go through or you hear the stories for all of us, and I know myself included, the toughest times are what really, um, when we can emerge from those and look back on them and go, man, I grew through that. And that really opened my eyes to the proper perspective, to, you know, the importance of relationships and quiet time and managing my, you know, um, guarding my heart better in terms of what I'm consuming in, in my eyes and ears. And so... I think that's, you know, all of that goes back to this perspective thing right now and and keeping in mind, um, you know, there's people that are going through much, much tougher parts. But nonetheless, no matter how difficult it is for any of us, we can learn and grow from it. 
And that's what I'm really trying to myself, my family, and, and even share with others right now. So. Todd Gongwar is our guest here on Sports Spectrum. Um, let's talk about your journey a little bit and learn a little bit about you. This is the intersection of sports and faith. I know that sports and faith have collided for you over the years. Tell us about those formative years and maybe um, Todd before Lead for God's Sake came about and kind of your journey. Yeah, Jason, you know, I mean, it, it's really cool. And, and so many times in our lives, we can look back and, and not until that time of looking back, we go, wow, God was so, I mean, it was so cool how God equipped me during that time. And I had no idea that's really what he was doing. Um, you know, you just kind of walk through each season and hope that you're getting from it what you should be getting from it to give to others. And, and um, you know, I, I loved I've, I've loved sports my whole life, played everything I could as a kid, and then eventually kind of gravitated toward basketball. Being from Indiana, that probably there's probably some outside influences that helped that. But, you know, so loved basketball, passionate about it, played as long as I could, and then eventually became a, an assistant college basketball coach at, at a pretty young age. And I did that all through the 90s. And um, what was cool is I ended up I was actually a, a coach for a small NAI school, Bethel, it's now Bethel University yep. in northern yep. Indiana. And um, so, you know, when you're when you're an assistant coach at that level, you really you really need to keep your day job. And so for me, I was you know, I grew up as a part of a family business anyways. And actually, our season, our, our busiest time were in the summer and, and times that we actually had a little bit more of a lull in um, demand on the basketball side. So. For, uh, you know, the better part of a dozen years, I ran parallel in both the sports and the business world. And uh, leading up to a time where, I, you know, I just became obsessed with studying the topic of leadership, you know, out of necessity more than anything else. And then I was actually brought into a larger company to kind of lead a cultural transformation for that organization. And then, you know, so became a senior leader in that team. And then eventually we were bought by a public company. And so was able to kind of spearhead that um, same thing with that organization. So looking back, you know, those those were awesome experiences where God really, really was equipping me um, to learn the importance of leadership, you know, the importance of kind of how the team dynamic was going and the cultural development of all of those situations that I was in. Um, but then the other thing was really key about that as much as he was equipping me, you know, the, one of the biggest things is I was, I was running so hard. So, I mean, just obsessed with the climb, like yep. many of us in our pursuits. Yep. And, um, you know, I just, you know, it wasn't until like the early two thousands coming like kind of the tail end of those times where I feel like God finally opened my eyes to the fact that Todd, you're running in these things and these are all good things, but, you um, there's there's something that needs to be foundational in your life that should never be compromised as a result of any of the good things that you're running after. And that is the relationships, I, the relationships I've created you for, you know, first and foremost with him. And then ultimately, as a big part of our relationship with with Christ is our relationships with everybody that he puts on our path. They're there for a reason. There's no accidents with regards to people. So. I think many of us lose sight of that. I know I lost sight of that, you know, time and time again in my pursuits. You know, you get so caught up in the climb and you just, you, you oftentimes take for granted, whether it's your spouse, your kids, or um, even others that are in your, in your inner circle. You take for granted the real call that is foundational to our purpose starts with those relationships and how we're treating those. And that was probably the biggest, you know, back in 2002, 2003, that was the biggest time where I feel like God really kind of, you know, hit me between the eyes with this, Todd, you can pursue whatever um, in this life, but if you pursue it at the expense of the most important things, um, you're really never going to achieve the best that I, that I created you for. And so, you know, that, that's kind of the, that's kind of the backstory that led up to, um, you know, the whole writing of lead for God's sake. We'll get back to our conversation with Todd Gongwar in just a little bit, but want to tell you about our friends at Water Mission. We love what Water Mission is about, a nonprofit Christian engineering ministry 
fighting the global water crisis with safe water, sanitation, and hygiene solutions in developing countries and disaster areas. They've served more than 5 million people in 56 countries. They're motivated, we love this, by its faith in Jesus Christ, who is the living water, providing sustainable, safe water solutions through a Christian worldview perspective. And they were born, interestingly enough, Water Mission, out of the need for safe water following Hurricane Mitch in 1998 and has provided relief following some of the world's most devastating disasters. And even right now during this pandemic, Water Mission is shining. They are helping, they are serving, they are providing solutions to help fight this global water crisis, which now is uh, more global than ever in terms of what we're all going through. They have 350 staff members working around the world in nine country programs in Africa, Asia, North, South, and Central America, and the Caribbean. And this in-country presence allows Water Mission to partner with local leaders and institutions to implement solutions tailored to the unique circumstances of each community. This is great stuff here. We love Water Mission. We're thankful to have them as a new partner with us here at Sports Spectrum. Check out their website, watermission.org, watermission.org, to learn more, to pray for them, and fight the global water crisis. We're also presented by Compassion International. We love Compassion. They've been a partner with us for a very long time now, and they are one of the best ministries out there with the work that they are doing providing children with a hope more powerful than poverty, releasing these children from poverty. And an opportunity for you to sponsor a child is available right now at their website, Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum. Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum. I want to invite you to make room around your dinner table to help a child who needs you. It's $38 a month, tax deductible, and an opportunity to know Jesus Christ as their savior. I mean, that to me, that's worth all the money in the world right there, giving kids an opportunity to know Jesus. But that sponsorship also provides access to school, medical care, vocational training, and the opportunity, as we said, to know Jesus Christ. Check out the website, compassion.com slash sports spectrum, and sponsor a child today. Now back to our conversation with Todd Gongwar here on Sports Spectrum. So take us through... Um, you know, that moment where the idea comes for the book, which, listen, I've told many people this. Um, I still have people come up to me and say, I remember when you gave me this book, Jason. Uh, and I remember reading it probably eight years ago now, nine years ago. Lead for God's Sake is what it's called. It's one of the top two books I've ever read on leadership, the other being John Gordon's uh, The Carpenter. And coincidentally enough, um, both to me are very similar in the way that they are written as a parable. Uh, Todd, you know how I feel about this book. Where did the idea come from from it, and, and where did whatever came to your brain help stem the creation of this book, which has changed a lot of people's lives, including mine? Yeah, so, so um, you know, I mentioned I had been um, – I had actually been working at a large – for a large organization kind of spearheading leadership and cultural development for that company, and, and – um, a lot of the concepts that you see in the book, I had been writing for years, even in owning my own business and trying to run my own business. I had been kind of starting to write, and I felt like God was laying a lot of these principles and concepts on my heart. Um, fast forward to some of those larger organizations where it was an opportunity for me to really play those, kind of flesh those things out in um, you know real life um, lab, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, we had both of those organizations. We had plants all over the country, and and uh, so those philosophies um, were able to really come to life. And as they were coming to life in the organization, the, the um, you know one in particular, which I won't, I won't spoil anything in the book, but the hatchet heart treasure concept of of why do we really do what we do? What's the real driving motives of the heart? And the, you know, so all those things really came to life. During that time, and I continued about three years prior to writing, I felt a very strong call to write, and I continued to have people speak into that. But again, because of my past, I had I came to realize that Todd, don't write. You're not going to write until the season is is correct for this. Yeah, because you can't do it at the expense of your family. And I, I had a young family at that point, and it was like, okay, I had this job, these responsibilities. I mean, all these things. So for three years, I kind of just waited, and then. 
a year and a half prior to writing it, I feel like God laid the title on my heart where, you know, and I still didn't even know what it was going to be. And then, then the season was finally where I, I knew it was clear to write. I felt at peace with my, my driving motives for writing it. And because everything I'd done before that, again, like I said, it was, it was more about me than others. It really was. And so at that point, I came to grips with this has got to be more about others, Todd. And, and I wanted my kids to have something, if anything should happen to me with these philosophies. And I had a, a lot of friends in the sports and business world that I knew were doing a lot of good and even great things, but often they were struggling with compromising the best things as a result of their pursuits of those good or great things. So, you know, I came to peace with writing it, prayed about it, had an outline laid out of step one, step two. It was going to be like a typical leadership book yeah. and struggled for a couple of weeks and felt really clearly guide, like laying on my heart, start over with a short story time which at that time I didn't have a clue how to write, um, para, you know, like fiction. And I didn't read a lot of fiction even leading up to that point. So I was like, oh, my gosh, Lord, you're not done. And, and I said, well, I'll, I'll write a couple pages or maybe a couple chapters and then we'll go with it. And so I didn't really have the whole plot or characters or anything laid out. I just started writing. And this story just poured out. And as I got, you know, probably halfway through, especially, I mean, I remember telling my wife, like, this is just crazy. And God is going to do something really cool with this. I don't know what, but this is so far beyond me. I can just tell. And so, you know, that kind of started it. And then obviously getting it to manuscript and out to different people, it became very clear early on. that It was like, okay, this is not Todd orchestrated. This is clearly God orchestrated Todd. Just don't get in the way. And that's, that's kind of been my, my thing for the whole journey is just walk in obedience and faith and, and let him lead. So, well, Tyndale came along and they published it, and that's a big publisher. Um, and then, so that's got to make you feel excited because I know having written a couple of books, you know, you get rejected by a lot of different publishers, even though you believe in the story, maybe not everybody else does. And then it kind of has like a slow takeoff, as I like to say, but it really starts to pick up, and there's people reading it, including the forward by Urban Meyer, um, certainly is, is, is no small name. If you read some of the endorsements like Lou Holtz and others, those are pretty big names that read this book, that are impacted by the book. When did you start to see, oh, wait a minute, this is, this is being read by more people than maybe I anticipated? <laughs> oh, totally, totally. <laughs> you know, but Urban read it, you know, between he, he actually wasn't coaching when he read it. So he read it between Florida and Ohio State. And it really it hit him hard. I mean, it really, um, you know, that was something that really, like he says, it, it kind of changed his trajectory at that time. At least his mindset, he had kind of lost sight of the, the relationships and the foundation. And so that was a really he was a really big one. When I got a note back from Lou Holtz about wishing I would have read it 30 years ago. Um, when those things started to happen, you know, shortly, it, it would have been in early, um, I want to say, actually, it would have been in, in late 2010, early 2011, or that summer. Yeah. Um, and I just kept hearing names, and, you know, that people just would reach out to me and go, hey, I heard about this from this coach or that person. And, and it was crazy, because I, like I said, I'd self published it at that time. And, and so I just, you know, when I got, when I would get calls or emails from people like that directly, like, again, like I said, Urban or, or whatever, it was just, um, you know, it was confirmation that, Todd, this this is just not you. This is really a lot bigger than you, Todd, because there's no way you just stumbled on writing your first book in this. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just crazy. Anybody that's written knows. I mean, it's crazy. Oh, yeah. And it's a hard journey. I, I mean, I you know that, but it's just... It's one of those things that, um, you know, I just once once people started reaching out um, and just kind of over and over, it just kind of took off. And like you said, Jason, it didn't it never did this. Oh, my gosh, it's selling millions and millions. It's always and it's continued to just be this this steady level trajectory of, you know, just people that are hearing it from other people. And hearing about it, people hand out, people read it and hand out five copies. And uh, people, people like yourself are kind of my lifesavers right now because they, <laughs> they, they mention it every once in a while. And that's what keeps it going. And so 
that's kind of the plan. I feel like God's had it for it. And, you know, um, I think a lot of times it would have been for me personally, I'm like, man, it would have been a lot easier if this thing would have just blown up and sold millions. And Well, that's what I want to ask you, Todd, because that's had to teach you a little bit about patience. I know. I mean, I kind of, with my first book, I felt like, I feel like that's kind of the same way, you know, it's certainly never, I mean, I don't want to say never, but I don't feel like it's ever going to be any kind of New York Times bestseller, but it's sort of occasionally here or there, somebody will say they picked it up. A prominent NFL quarterback just told me a couple days ago that they were reading the book unprompted. I hadn't even sent it to him and that kind of blew me away. And I'm like, man, I wrote this book two years ago and it's like this slow progression that's got to be something that you had to kind of wrestle through a little bit. Cause I think like you, like you, I had this thought in my brain, like, okay, come on, where's the million sales and where is, why isn't this thing blowing up and, and why isn't it being talked about by everybody right away? It, yeah. it really has to teach you patience. I would imagine. There's no doubt. And, and you know what, Jason, you make a, you make a really good point. I mean, like it meets, you know, I, I, the, the story, the thing that I've learned, it kind of meets people where they are. And so I hear that from coaches, from people all the time when they hand it to people. I can't tell you how many stories I get from people that they will get the book. And two years later, it's been sitting on their nightstand. They're sick or something happens. Yeah. And pick it up and they'll email me at three in the morning because they said they couldn't put it down. And then it'll be like, like, this is the perfect timing. Yeah. This is when I was supposed to get it. And so, so I, I'd say that. And I mean, I know because I read your book. And again, your message, Jason, is so powerful, so important um, to, to, to any of us, all of us, but especially in the times we're in. I believe that the message of forgiveness, um, man, I mean, you turn on the TV and one of the biggest issues we're dealing with right now is everybody wants to blame. Yeah. That's the first gut. Re- the first gut reaction is have I been wronged? Is there an issue? Who can I blame it on? And then if I can blame it, now the next thing we're learning is let's not just blame. Let's really try to get even, hurt, and, and just be hateful. Yeah. And that destroys you from the inside out. I don't care who that hatred is aimed at. It destroys hatred, bitterness. Ang- I mean, Hebrews tells us, you know, don't let even a root, uh, you know, just a hint of bitterness take root because it defiles many. And we're in a society right now where just we're just accepting that. And so the message of forgiveness that you talk about in your book um, is a is a powerful and and so so such an important thing. And and you know you've gone through it, you've lived it, where you were hurt and you did go through some really really difficult situations. And none, nonetheless, you still have that choice, like all of us do. Like and and as Again, as followers of Christ, it's really not too much of a choice that God gives us. And you, if you really read through the scriptures and follow Jesus' teaching, he really doesn't say, hey, you know, if that person comes and apologizes to you, then you should, you should forgive them. Or, hey, if they make it easier for you, then you should forgive them. You know, if, if, if they haven't done anything too, too bad to you, then you should forgive them. Yeah. It's like there's a constant theme of forgive. You know, if you want to if you want to talk about loving others, you can't genuinely love others if you're not walking in unconditional forgiveness, too. And so I say that as a as a as a kudos to you and your message, <laughs> too, Jason. So I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm going to do it. And I know it's no, like, it's OK. I just feel like that is so, so powerful and, and such an important part of what is needed in our society. Today. I talk about it. And, and mention it from time to time in your book. But I, I talk about forgiveness almost all the time. And, 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 you know, a lot of times I'm in state institutions and things. So I have to be, you know, I, I have to um, be measured in how exactly I, I lay that out. But I don't care what your belief system is. Listen, the bottom line is, if you're walking in bitterness, hatred and anger, it is destroying you from the inside out. And you wonder why you lay down, you know, you lay your head on the pillow at night in angst, you know, just struggling. And man, so often at the core of that struggle is an unwillingness to forgive somebody or something in in your life. So, well, thank you for that. You hit a a (laughs) tough spot there or a, 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 uh, yeah, you hit a nerve. One of the lessons I learned during my time at ESPN was if somebody is 
going to say something, you just shut up and let him say it and you don't interrupt. And that's what I did. I didn't interrupt. So I appreciate that though. That, that means a lot. And I'm so glad that, um, that the book has impacted you, especially the way your book has impacted me as we kind of start to land the plane a little bit. Let me ask you what this book has done as far as you say, you know, you get to go to universities, you get to speak at a lot of different places. And really that's part of the, of this business. Cause you haven't written a book since, and that's going to be the next question. So you can start thinking about that in a second, but this book has opened up a lot of doors for you to really take this into a movement and not just be like, okay, here's my book. And this is my speaking. Like, this is a, a, a thing that you really go and teach the lessons that are in this book. Right. Yeah. So, um, there's no doubt when it, once it started getting in the hands, especially of a lot of those you know, high profile coaches, um, you know, I started to be invited in to speak to the staff, speak to the teams, um, you know, and, and, and the really cool thing too, Jason, in, in that journey has been, you know, it, it, I, I said, it kind of meets people where they are. So, yes. you know, you have some coaches that it, they read it and it really hits them. It's kind of a jolt to their perspective. Like, Hey, you got to get back to this. There's other coaches that has been so cool for me and, and two in particular right now. I mean, Dabo Sweeney and Tony Bennett, two guys that you know as well as I do. I mean, like they are so true, yes. so um, founded in the principles that are taught in the book. I mean, those are coaches that when they read it, it was more like, uh-huh, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it wasn't as much of a, gosh, I got to get back to this. And um, so in any case, you know, it's been cool to, to, yeah, be invited into all those places like that. Both Clemson and, and Virginia have been really some of the coolest places. I tell people, you know, to be able to speak to those teams or to speak to the staff there in both those programs, work with those coaches, or at least get to know them even in a little better. Um, it's been, those have been such cool learning experiences for me. So for me, I mean, a lot of stuff with a lot of, of um, teams, um, I don't go in anymore. I mean, I used to get asked sometimes by coaches to come in and just speak to their teams. I don't do that yeah. um, just anymore without being able to first work with the staff or at least speak to the staff because I feel like that's where it starts. If coaches aren't willing to, you know, check their own heart first and make sure that their heart is in the right place in terms of how they're impacting and influencing their kids, um, my message to the kids you know, it's not to say that's not important, but I think there's a lot of, of uh, danger sometimes in, in communicating the message like I'm, I'm communicating and then a kid being maybe dealing with a coach, a position coach or whatever that is completely the opposite of that message. Hmm. The kid's like, wow, you know, rolling their eyes at listening to somebody like me try to tell. So it's really important to me, really in business and in sports right now that I, I, I'm really – getting more toward um, working and, and even doing more consistent touches. So usually I, most of the teams and places that I go, I, I work with multiple times. That's really my preference. Um, I like to help them deeper into not only the leadership component, but the cultural development component. And who are we? Why do we do what we do? What's our real purpose? And how are we walking in alignment with those things? So I love it. That's really part of the cool part of the journey. So when's the next book, dude? I mean, like this has been a long, not long enough time. Where's lead for God's sake Two? where's Joe, the janitor, you know, which if you don't know who that is, read the book and you'll know who Joe, the janitor is, but where's the sequel or where's the next book stemming from? What are you thinking here? Yeah, um, that's a great question, Jason. And the, my my number one answer to that is, please say a prayer for me that sometime it'll be clear when that's supposed to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, things are so much different for me. I mean, I really, when I wrote this, I was in a season of complete calm, clarity, quiet, not being pulled in any other different directions. I really, I was... I mean, it was just a completely different season where I feel like my heart could really be opened up to share. And and um, it's been very, very challenging. You know, I mean, the, the tension of, you know, I, I I tell people, you know, I have to kill to eat. I mean, I don't have a I don't have the benefit of, you know, like I said, it's not selling millions and millions of copies where I'm just, you know, cashing checks and feeding the family without doing anything. Like I have to go out and speak and work with teams. I mean, that's what I do. And if I don't go, 
I don't, uh, I don't have an, an income stream. So, um, there's a tension there between, you know, continuing to make sure that I'm pouring my heart and soul into every client and opportunity that I have. And at the same time, separating for a season to be able to, um, write. And that's a big step of faith too. So I'm, you know, part of it is there, there probably has been elements of fear, <clears throat> but it's also out of necessity too. I went through some, some really, really tough, a really, really tough time about two and a half years ago. Mm. And it kind of set me back into a, a different season where I just, th- to be honest, I just didn't feel like I could take um, a month or two or even a few weeks to sit down and just do nothing but write. And some will look at that as an excuse. I understand. I mean, I'm, I'm, we're all wired a little different. My head goes in so many different directions sometimes that I just, I just wanted to be quiet and I wanted to truly come from a heart place. And for that, I feel like for me, I just got to have a, a season of real rest to do that. So, you know, who knows? I feel like uh, it's interesting you ask it because now I might very well be forced into that season. I'm I'm kind of forced into that season right now, although I do have, like I said, a few um, folks that I'm still able to work with a little bit in, in, from a from a virtual basis. So, uh-huh. uh, but we'll see. Well, we'll so. be praying for you. I think praying for just that opportunity again, whatever door God's open up. But even just the idea of, you know. People ask it, you know, how is the coronavirus affecting you? How is it affecting? Well, listen, this is your livelihood of traveling and being able to go and meet and and talk to people. So that's taking away right now. Um, so we'll pray that the the Lord continues to, you know, first of all, get rid of this virus, that we can get back to at least a, a normal, a sort of normal. It may not be the normal that it was before, but at least it will be a sort of normal for you, Todd. Um, last question here. Um, this is maybe the easiest question you might get, but what makes, what makes a great leader? Like if you're just going and you're speaking or you're sharing and somebody just wants to know, okay, what, what's the secret to being a great leader? What would you tell them? Um, well, I think there's a, there's a lot that flows from this. So the simplest word I would tell you would be humility. Mm-hmm. Um, and from humility, you know, obviously, self-awareness I look at as one of the most you know important attributes in leadership because if you're not self-aware how do you know if you're genuinely walking in love or forgiveness or you know respect or you know honesty and all these other things that um we need to be walking in as leaders so first and foremost like I said you know a humble posture of humility and I mean a genuine posture of putting others before yourself Mm -hmm. um I think now, especially in the time we're in, um, it is so easy. I, I tell people all the time, you know, it's easy for us to, to look at maybe super the super successful and go, wow, they're so selfish. They're so greedy. Or what, I mean, like sometimes we can tend down that path. Man, they're just so focused on me, 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 me. Yeah. Well, the reality is, is pain can be an absolutely um, – can, can be a huge temptation for selfishness too. And I think right now, as we're going through this time, like you said, the tendency is to say, oh, well, it was me. Here's what I'm going through. Here's what I'm missing out on or struggling with. And hey, the pain is real. So I'm not taking away from the fact that we're all, no matter what it is we're going through, whatever pain we're feeling is our pain and it matters. At the same time, man, what can we do to shift our focus, to try to go, how can I help others out there? And that's, you know, that's so hard to do. And even for myself, I mean, I have to constantly, constantly check myself. Todd, walk in humility. What are others dealing with? How can you help others through this time? And so that's, that's what, you know, I've been, you know, I've been trying to really call friends. I call a lot of my friends and a lot of cases, not, not just friends that can do something for me. I mean, like friends that might just be alone lonely, hurting, whatever, and even FaceTime them just to, so they can look into somebody else's eyes and go, hey, man, how you doing? I care. Yeah. So, so important. And so mm-hmm. like, that's it. That's, that's good stuff. He is uh, Todd Gongwar. Again, get the book. If you haven't heard of this book or if you haven't read it, um, I mean, I have a couple copies here. So seriously, if you're listening to this and you want a copy, 
uh, you know, find me on Twitter and I'll make sure that we get you a copy of this book, you know, within reason, the first couple that maybe that reach out to me, but it's one of the best books I've ever read, Lead for God's Sake, and it's uh, a parable for finding the heart of leadership. And he is Todd Gongor. Todd, thanks so much for being here, man. Uh, we'll be praying for you. Continue best wishes. And uh, let's catch up again soon. Appreciate you. Thank you so much, Jason. It's, it's been awesome to be here, man. It's, it's great to do this with you. Thanks, brother. And many thanks to Todd Gongwar for joining us here on Sports Spectrum. And do pick up his book, Lead for God's Sake. I'm telling you, it's one of the best books I've ever read on leadership. It is a top two book for me on leadership and really one of the best books I've ever read, period. That's how good, uh, and I put my name on that book and say that is how good this book is. So go pick it up, Lead for God's Sake by Todd Gongwar, available everywhere books are found. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Sports Spectrum. We also want to thank our partners and sponsors with Water Mission and Compassion. We love both of them. Please go check out their websites, watermission.org and compassion.com. We love them, and we want you guys to support them because the work that they're they're doing, both Water Mission and Compassion, is so important. So please go support them. Go check out their website and see all of the great work that they are doing doing. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you email us, jason at sportspectrum.com. It comes right to me. Any ideas or guests that you have, any feedback you want to provide here on Sports Spectrum, the email address again, jason at sportspectrum.com. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time right here on Sports Spectrum. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and stay safe.